The second ray, the flame of illumination and wisdom. Discourse from Adama with Lord Lanto. Greetings, my beloveds. This is Adama. I am here in your presence today with several beings that most of you already know or at least have heard of. Among those present are our brother, Anamar, and the guardian master of the second ray, Lord Lanto. Aurelia. Hello, Adama. We would like to discuss with you the attributes and uses of the illumination ray to receive a greater understanding of it. It must be that you already read our mind since you brought Lord Lanto with you. We welcome all of you in our midst and in our hearts. We are honored to have your presence with us. Adama. Thank you, my friends. It is also our pleasure and honor to be again sharing our love and wisdom with all of you and later on to a greater number of people through our published books. At this crucial time of Earth's transition into higher consciousness and dimension, it is more important than ever for every soul incarnated here to understand what is going on energetically and physically on your planet of evolution. Indeed, more than ever, you are all in need of more enlightenment to fully understand and remember your divine essence, to know what you are doing here on this planet and discover the purposes and goals you have set up for your experience here. It is time now for all of you to take advantage of the most wondrous window of opportunity for spiritual liberation through ascension that is offered to you at this time. Because of the deep love of your creator and through the most awesome divine grace that is offered to you from his heart, you can now be liberated from the choices of separation from God you made a long time ago. You have been evolving here for a long time in a consciousness of spiritual slumber, which has created much discomfort, unhappiness, pain, and limitation. Through the self-imposed ignorance and separation you have chosen to experience, you have forgotten how to manifest your lives as divine beings. Many of you have had enough of this unnatural way of being and have called forth the intervention of your creator. Lifetime after lifetime, your souls have been imprinted with erroneous belief systems about God and yourself. You have followed the limiting teachings of religions whose leader's agenda was to keep you in spiritual ignorance, control, and submission. For most, the religions and dogmas you have been so attached to believing and embodying have kept you boxed into an endless stream of erroneous concepts which have prevented you from experiencing yourself in your many incarnations through the eyes of your divinity. We desire to talk of a level of spirituality that is pure in its essence. We have often said that true spirituality is a simple concept that could be summarized in a small booklet. It is so simple that people have completely forgotten how to be spiritual and to embody it. You always look for the most complicated concepts you can find. Through the ages, millions of books containing elaborate and confusing ideologies about God have been written on spirituality. 
And in fact, very few, if any, acknowledge the simple truths that pure spiritual pure spirituality offers. A great number of your spiritual books have been written by those whom we consider the spiritually blind, wishing to guide the others of humanity who are also spiritually blind. True spirituality is a state of being, a pure state of consciousness that brings you back to the consciousness of love, light, true life, and your divinity. In general, spirituality cannot be gained by the many things you do or don't do, neither by the many rules imposed on you by your society, your religious organizations, and your governments that you are so eager to conform to. It simply is. This is why all the rituals, practices, and concepts with do's and don'ts that you accept or reject were meant to be, at best, only basic guidelines by well-meaning people. These guidelines could have assisted you if you used them within the right perspective but they can never inject true spirituality within your soul. You alone can do this in communion with your divine essence. The purpose of our discourses and writings is to bring forth a teaching that is simple for people to follow, a teaching that will assist to bring you back to the consciousness of the God within as the great architect of your life stream. We wish you to rediscover, as we have, the joy and bliss of living your lives again according to your own unique pathway, totally connected with this divine essence that beats your heart. We wish you to remember at all times that this divine essence that is alive and active within each of you is the only true source of all that you can be, all that you can know to manifest your daily lives as divine beings. The river of life, of love, of limitless abundance, and of every good and perfect gift you wish to enjoy and yearn to obtain lies within you awaiting your recognition and your dedication in calling it forth. With this introduction, I am now going to talk about illumination, one of the attributes of the God flame that can greatly assist you in your reawakening. The ray of illumination represents God wisdom true knowledge, and enlightenment in all its various facets. It represents Sophia Christ consciousness illumination, understanding, perception, and peace from the heart of God's omniscience. It is literally an unlimited extension of the mind of God. Many of the souls incarnating on the ray of illumination by divine appointment become teachers of humanity. A great number of the masters of wisdom you are familiar with who have incarnated in the past as great teachers for humanity are beings whose main soul pathway is the ray of illumination. To name a few, you have the Master Yeshua, 2,000 years ago, Lord Maitreya, Lord Buddha, Lord Confucius, Jua Kul, Lord Lanto, Master Kutumi, and many others. Masters of all the rays have also incarnated from time to time to become teachers of humanity, 
because humanity must learn to understand and master the initiations of all the rays in perfect balance in order to qualify for ascension. Everyone has been created on one of the 12 rays and millions of beings exist on each one. Understand that there is not one ray better than another, like some of you would like to believe. All of the rays must be embodied, understood, and integrated equally. The illumination ray is connected with the crown chakra, known as the thousand petal lotus flame. As you invoke the illumination ray in your crown, the thousand petals of your crown chakra start the process of being illuminated again by expanding more your potential of reconnection with the true mind of God, which has been lying dormant within you for thousands of years. However, it never left you. And this is what you want to awaken now. All the pockets of darkness you have embedded there through ignorance are basically pockets of the sleeping consciousness that prevent you from experiencing the mind of God in its pure form. When you invoke the illumination ray in your crown chakra, in the totality of your consciousness and set your intention to reawaken all the attributes of your divinity, your higher self will use the energies you're invoking to gradually lighten and activate the dark pockets that have been lying dormant there for a very long time. Aurelia. Does the illumination ray have an essence or a color? Adama. The illumination ray is golden yellow like the sun and quite brilliant. The temple of illumination situated at Lake Titicaca in South America is the main focus on this planet for this ray. The guardians of this ray are the god and goddess Meru, who have been holding the energies of illumination for thousands of years in that most awesome etheric temple. In Telos, we also created a smaller version of this majestic second ray temple, as we have done for the temples of various rays. In the time of Lemuria, we had thousands of temples on our continent representing hundreds of attributes of the creator. And we had temples for every aspect of our evolution. We had over a hundred temples dedicated to the various rays alone. My beloveds, understand that there are many rays you are not yet aware of. You know of seven and of the five secret rays, and there are many more. It is not necessary that you be aware of all the rays at this time, but it is of utmost importance for those aspiring to make their ascension in this incarnation to gain mastery of the first seven rays and later on the five secret rays. Aurelia, what initiations might one go through while working with the illumination ray? Adama, it will be the initiations of becoming aware of all the erroneous beliefs you have entertained about yourself that have occupied your consciousness and kept you in so much pain and limitation. It is stepping out of ignorance and uniting with the mind of God. As you integrate and infuse yourself with the ray of illumination, you can invoke the mind of God to do its perfect work 
in your own mind to transform and evolve. There is the human brain and there is the mind of God, which are not exactly the same. The mind of God represents a universal consciousness that knows everything and holds no limitation. The human brain is governed by the human ego and is imprinted with fears, limitations, and erroneous beliefs about the self. It has been altered by the human ego with its fears and the consciousness of separation. However, it has been a tool for your evolution, and it has served you well. Your human mind, as it evolves, is destined to ultimately unite with the mind of God. Do not plan to get rid of it like some of you would like to do. It is yours, and you must own it as an integral aspect of your beingness. What you need to do is transform it by right knowledge, true wisdom, and by surrender of all your old beliefs that no longer serve you and are keeping you in limitation and ignorance. If you do this inner work to create your transformation, your ego will also evolve to unite and fuse with the mind of God through the infusion action of illumination. In the process of ascension, all aspects of you, including your human and ego mind, will be uniting completely with the mind of God and all attributes of your divinity. Consider it an ongoing process for eternity, as there will always be another level and another to open to and learn from. The process that you need to surrender to in order to open your mind, your heart, and all aspects of yourself to your divinity cannot happen overnight. This is the journey you have created and planned for yourself before your incarnation in order to attain the goals you set for yourself for your evolutionary pathway. Gradually, you will integrate the knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom you need into your consciousness. As you do this, at a certain point, the veils will lift and you will unite your mind with the fullness of the mind of God. If you don't wish to do your homework and you choose to stay in your present state, maintaining your erroneous concepts and belief systems, it is your choice. No one will force you into it. Be also aware that you will have to live with the consequences of being held back in your evolution, while others you know and love will be lifted up into the next level. Your own evolution is your primary goal for your incarnation, and it requires your willingness and your efforts to engage in it fully. It simply doesn't happen automatically. It is really a desire of the soul And it has to become the most profound desire and focus of your incarnation. This doesn't mean you cannot enjoy your third dimensional life. In fact, it is required that you love and enjoy your life to its fullest. It all needs to be integrated as one. Your transformation at this time of Earth's transition requires your full commitment and participation. Group. How can we consciously evolve our human mind to unite with the divine mind? Adama. Every day. Invoke the energies of illumination to unite with your human brain. 
Strive to expand your consciousness any way you can, such as reading material that inspires you, meditating, communing with nature, etc. You do not want to just feed the mind information, but you want to nourish your heart and soul with all that is noble, beautiful, and enlightening. Go into your heart and begin to unite your energies with the divine within you. In the process of ascension, your transformed mind will unite with the sacred heart. The heart will ascend first and you will experience divine union. All your chakras will become unified. They will remain as different foci, but all united at the same time. You will no longer feel separated from the rest of you and the universe. They will remain as different foci, but all united at the same time. Also, many more chakras will be added to you. You see how powerful that is? This is why an ascended master is an enlightened being. You don't have to wait for anyone's permission or nudging to start the process. Begin now if you want this illumination to take place within you. Group. If I were to call on the illumination ray during my sleep, what initiations and process would I be going through? Where would I be taken? Adama. We suggest that you call the elimination ray during the waking time. In your sleep, you know all of this. It is in the consciousness of your waking time that you need to integrate the wisdom you learn during your sleep time. Who you are on the other side of the veil as the conscious self, is very well informed and has no problem. Aurelia. When I go places in my sleep time, I know that it is not necessary at this time that I consciously remember where I have been and what I have learned. I feel that it is more important that the knowledge I gained during nighttime to be integrated in my daily life. Adama. Exactly. You are not meant yet to remember your nightly adventures because they are so wondrous. If you remembered, you would not be interested in completing your third dimensional experience and it would set you back. Once you set up your intention with your guides and masters to do and learn certain things during your sleep time, they will take you to all kinds of wondrous places that will assist you to meet your goals, but you will not remember. For example, if you want to go to the Illumination Temple, they will take you there. There are more than one on the planet, and you can visit them all if you wish. In fact, you have already done that more than once. We also have an illumination temple in our city, Telos. We have created a bridge of light between the temple in Telos, the one in South America, and in the Royal Teton Retreat, the main focus of Lord Lanto. In our realm, they are not energetically separate. We all work together as one. Group. Do we come to work on only one ray during a lifetime? Adama. Not exactly. In one incarnation, most of you work at least on two rays, a primary ray and a secondary ray in which you want to gain more understanding. In one lifetime, you could be working on the second or third ray, but you have had incarnations working on all the other rays as well. 
the ray that you are working on in this life is not necessarily indicative of your original monadic or soul ray. When you ascend, you usually return in service to your original monadic ray. Aurelia, how does the illumination ray balance our mental, emotional, physical, and soul bodies? Adama, the illumination ray alone does not balance all of your bodies. Its main purpose is to assist the attainment of true wisdom, knowledge, illumination, and the integration of the divine mind. Each ray has a different action, and they all complement each other equally. Your world right now is flooded with misinformation. This is why right information is so needed and discernment so important to develop, which is also a second ray attribute. Group. Adama. Would Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and John F. Kennedy be considered second-ray beings? Adama. John F. Kennedy was a first-ray being, the ray of leadership and of the will of God. Gandhi was a third-ray being of love and compassion. Martin Luther King was also a first-ray being. Leadership is mostly a first-ray activity, but not exclusively. Not only beings on the first ray take roles of leadership in your world. Beings on all the rays also bring their gifts in leadership roles from time to time in order for all of the rays to be demonstrated. Group. Can you explain the misuses of the second ray? Adama. Some of the misuses of the second ray would be to use knowledge in the wrong way or to entertain conscious ignorance, such as not wanting to see things as they are. Entertaining illusions about life and self is also a misuse of the second ray. I'm going to talk a moment about the heart. The human mind and the brain are tools that you have in the third dimension that have been designed originally to always be at the service of the heart. Your heart is connected to the divine mind of God. And until you reach a state of union with self, your mental or ego mind needs always to be consciously at the service of the heart. In time, it becomes a natural state of beingness. When you are constantly working or acting through your human mind instead of your heart, not connecting with the higher purposes of life, that state of consciousness creates a misuse of the second ray through spiritual ignorance, control, and manipulation of the ego mind. Some people have great human intelligence, but have no spiritual wisdom. They often use that great intelligence in the service of the altered ego instead of seeking their oneness with all that is. Do you understand? You can only change your own perspective on things and embrace the energies of love, peace, and harmony for yourself first. And then when you own enough of it, you can radiate it to others around you simply by being who you are. When everyone in the population starts accessing the mind of God through the heart, your governments also begin to change and mirror the new consciousness of the collective. As you change, as the collective evolves its consciousness, so will your governments also change. This way, you begin to see that it is never about them, 
but about all of you together. Your governments always reflect the consciousness of the people they govern. As you evolve, you will have the wisdom to elect more enlightened beings as your leaders. They are your mirrors. Aurelia, what are the side effects of the misuse of the crown chakra? And how would it show up in the physical body? Adama, you know the crown chakra is the instrument and the seat of the mind of God in the physical body, designed to reflect knowingness, wisdom, and illumination. Those who are consciously misleading people, controlling and manipulating, using their human knowledge for their own benefit, in time will face the harvest of their creation as karma. Some of the ways it may return can be as mental illness, such as Alzheimer, Parkinson's, loss of memory, or mental dysfunction or disease. As you get older, you are meant to get wiser and embrace more and more of the mind of God. The opposite is quite prevalent in your society as people get older. Many people in nursing homes or mental institutions have reached a state of mental deterioration to the point of not being able to relate to their own name anymore or recognize their loved ones. Let us do a meditation and go to the illumination temple on the etheric plane. You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart you are a part of me You are the face of God